Let's start with a very simple sound, which is the sound of a vocal trumpet. Many of you have probably done this before, and um, I'll also show you that this, this is only to amplify my voice, it's not going to change it all, so I'll go on and right? Simple vocal trumpet sounds like this. Right, you've heard vocal trumpet before, and, then, and so you know that this is just literally making me loud. I'll do the exact same thing off mic. Pretty good, right? So let's get more and then it's Okay, so this is a sound that I think you will all be able to make without too much difficulty. We start with the sound, just sing it, sing do, go do. Good, now, ladies are up there, do great, some of the guys are down there. Do, because they need to show up, they're like, yeah, you're allowed to stuff to room, and like, you're allowed to So, unless you have a really big chomp, trumpet, do, we're gonna go, do, full set up, everybody, guys, do up here, do. Now, we're gonna say boo instead of do. Sing boo. Now, what we wanna do is close our mouth so there's only a tiny opening and just a little bit of, of movement. It sounds like this. Right? You're kind of getting tripping over your lips, starting going. It's hard, right? It doesn't sound as good. So there's a way around this. Everybody say chur. Sure. Sing chur, chur, chur. Now sing chur, 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 chur. Now we're going to take our lips and put them back the way they were with a little girl. And listen. Trumpet. Now, some of you, and I've, I've, I've seen some people who do uh, vocal trumpet, they don't go straight. They like to do it out of the side of their mouth for whatever reason. Or, there's no, there are no rules, okay? I want to make sure you all know, you're going to look stupid no matter what you do. You just get to choose how you look stupid. It's just like I always say that to, to, to uh, new parents, because I have a 19 year old now, I said, listen, you don't get to decide if your kids are going to resent you. They're going to resent you. You just get to choose how they resent you. So you don't get to choose if you look silly. You just get to choose how you look silly. So you can even try going out of one side of your mouth. Try going. No, try going. Now go. Choose your poison. Chocolate, vanilla, strawberry. Those are your three options. I guess you could go like find different, but yeah, but you know, they get worse, not better. So it's probably good to stick with the classics of these. Now, take this exact sound, and we're gonna move it down in our voice and slide around. And we have trombone, try that. Now something I've noticed is that moving your hands to replicate the instrument helps for two reasons. Number one, it helps you phrase it. So, so try doing that. And then the, the vibrato at the end with the trombone, it's a really wide vibrato, generally, right? So, try. Good, good, good. I do recommend you use both hands. I saw a couple of people just with one hand going up and down, and I think there's a possibility that's misinterpreted on stage. <laughs> I'll say them more about that, and they're not going to look at the person or people who are doing it. But I just think, you know, people, yes, make good choices, I think is a quote from Pitch Perfect. And the other reason we do that is that it helps the audience clue into what we're doing. You know what I'm saying? But just choose the right answer because it's just too confusing. Yeah. Okay. So now, a different sound, and this one is that exact same instrument. But instead of a straight ahead trumpet, we're going to take and put a harmony, a, a cone, inside the bell of the, of the trumpet will give us that smoky Miles Davis jazz bell sound. And this is, this is one of the harder sounds to do. Uh, listen to see for some reason. 
If you ever like, if you really need to use the bathroom and, and you know, the, whoever's driving is like, you know, we're gonna go now, then you're like, come back, guys, come. No, there's another hour. No, I think you'll be like, okay, fine, it's fine. And five minutes, I like, get whatever you want. It's guaranteed, yes. Okay, so to make this sound uh, requires you using your voice in a really very different way than you ever had before. One thing to know is this is one that can really hurt your vocal cords if you don't do it correctly. So for any of these sounds, if you're feeling pain, that's nature's way of saying, stop. And there is a good way to do it. Um, I had to figure out how to make the sound though, <clears throat> but, I, but I learned that it could be done when at, the, I think, the first a cappella festival in Italy, after the concert, everybody's riding back in the bus to the hotel or whatever, and I remember seeing Lean On Me, like one of those big, cheesy a cappella moments. And then I heard a trumpet in the back of the bus, and I was like, who the hell would bring a trumpet to an a cappella festival? Like, because it was full on, and then I turned around, it was this old Italian guy. And it was just like, you know, and, and, and so I went back to him, and I was like, uh, how are you doing that? He was like, non è I was like, oh, uh, no, Italiano, par away. So, uh, I had to just see that he did it and then figure out how to make the sound. So, um, the, I figured it out, then I had to figure out how to teach it. And the best way I figured it out is what I call the Cartman Method. How many of you guys have seen South Park? Do you guys, South Park is great, right? So South Park is that vulgar American cartoon that's like little cut out characters that live in Colorado. And Cartman is the most popular of them. Cartman is the little rotund one with a filthy mouth and a horrible attitude. And uh, you may just, if you, if you hear the voice of Cartman, you may know what I'm talking about. The gang came, check it out, they did. He said, hey guys. Say, hey guys. And they say, how you doing? And then when he gets upset, he goes, I want my cheesy poops. And he goes, eh. That, that's not it. That's where we're starting, good. Hold that sound. So, we're gonna take that sound, that big, bright, obnoxious A eh sound, and then we're gonna close our mouth around it, keeping it big and open in the back like an umlaut. I told you this was gonna be weird. It's, there's no money refunded, but you can leave it. <laughs> so, take that eh, that big, open sound, eh, and then we're gonna close around it. Listen. Eh. Now, what I'm hearing from some of you is that you're, you're starting with the obnoxious sound, but then as you get, as you kind of close around it, it's getting pretty. So I'm hearing like this. <laughs> I can't help it, my voice is so beautiful, right? So, what you need to do is keep that, that buzzy, obnoxious sound all the way through. So, listen. sound up a little bit, but you don't want to open it up a lot, because if you open it up a lot, you're going to sound like a different cartoon, uh, you know, the Charlie Brown Christmas and the Peanut specials, but the teachers always like that, <laughs> which is not a, a, a musical sound you'll use that much. Let's try this a little bit. Oh, you got all pretty again. Go back to... any road trip you want, right? <laughs> you nailed it, you got that sound. Okay, so now let's shift over and let's do uh, a very light, genteel instrument, the flute. Now I'll tell you right now that I've never really come up with a good use for an acapella flute, and I'm not sure anyone ever will in history, but it's still good to at least be able to know that you can do it in case, I don't know, 
in a hostage situation. And you're just like, I have no idea. Anyway, the flute sounds a little like this. Kind of pretty and useless. So the way to get to that sound is everybody sing. Now instead of do, we're gonna sing thu, T H O. Now what you want to do is you want to sing it. But for those of you that are voice teachers, by the way, I apologize. You want to sing it really breathy, like dump air. Some of you are getting it. Some of you not quite. So think Marilyn Monroe. Think Happy Birthday, Mr. President. Like that kind of breathy, okay? Sing. Good, that's the sound. Now, close your mouth to make as small an opening as you did before, just like with the trumpet. And then the last little step is your vibrato, and that's by just wiggling your lips. Listen. That's it, go for it. Simple, just the letters T H F. Thum. Say thum. Say thum thum thum. Now a couple of you are saying thum. You're putting a little vowel in there. Thum 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 thum. The problem is, and I have a whole theory about this. Uh, no one's offered me scientific money to study it, but so I'm going to just say that that's a scientific fact until someone proves me wrong. <laughs> Everybody's brain processes different information in different places. So you've got your visual center, you've got your spatial center, you've got your kinesthetic center from body movement, etc. etc. When I sing to you the words, happy birthday to you, your brain's processing that information in the language center as well as the music center. You're triggering both centers, and then you, you automatically are listening and you go, that's a person. Because that's the only thing that can make language and music at the same time. Robots eventually will replace us, hopefully not during my lifetime, because I enjoy my career. Um, the, the thing is, however, if I go, you, you go, okay, uh, there aren't words, what's that sound? And you're looking for the categorization, what's closest, and that's why the hand, you know, gestures help, trumpet, he's making a trumpet sound, right? People make really quick judgments all the time. Um, the thing is, what we want to do with all these sounds is make sure that none of them are words. So, just listen to me go, or even higher, right? That sounds much more instrumental than, as soon as I say thumb, as soon as you hear that vowel, you're like, that's a word, that's a person. Or even, but as soon as they go, it sounds much more instrumental. So everybody with me go, now that's going to be the alto part. Sopranos go. Tenors. And basses. Good, we're going to do all four of those parts together. One, two, three. Again. And listen. Listen around. That's a four part string orchestra plucking strings, right? And it sounds good. Do it again. One, two, three. That's a very usable sound. Anytime you have dit or do or one of those kind of like quick sounds in an arrangement, you can swap in that boom sound. It works really well. Basses in particular, this is a great stand-up string bass sound. I'm a tenor, so my apologies for, for not getting the full experience of a, a proper bass, but the sound of Excellent. Now, to give you a little glimpse of the future, because we will get to vocal percussion shortly, you put a T, a two, on every other one, and you get yourself a hi-hat. 
and the bass at the same time. Just listen. <coughs> And that's, that's how we start to weave vocal percussion into background parts if you don't want vocal percussion to be a separate entity. You can actually attach it to other sounds. Cool? So far so good? Good. Now I'm going to grab a microphone stand for a completely different sound. I'm going to go back to the obnoxious sounds. I'm just telling you. This is going to be harmonic. And the reason I have my hands free is because I need them to make a sound. Everybody say, ha. Ha. Everybody say, ha. Touching, and this is when I pull it away. Do you hear that? I try doing it, and and move your teeth, move your mouth around a little. By the way, to remind you, I'm not going. This is not the letter B or F or anything like that. It's literally just. show you a few different sounds you can use this for. The first is a bowed violin. Or guys are going to do cello. Part of it's the phrase, but part of it's that, that natural buzzy tone. Another sound is the theremin, the world's first electronic instrument, which you've heard maybe in the Star Trek theme. 
or um, the creature double feature black and white movies, you know, when we were younger and Sunday. Blood sucking monsters come. <laughs> but really, the most useful application of this sound in contemporary a cappella is you put a little distortion in it, get a little attitude behind it, and you get <laughs> electric guitar. That's really how it's used. And by the way, you hear that that, that distortion. You know what that is? It's fit, that's right. <laughs> by the way, so that electric guitar sound and that natural distortion happens because a little bit of saliva is able to break up the perfect seal of just a little saliva and there goes. The rest, or a lot of it, depending upon how, if you want to be as spitty as my sixth grade history teacher, you can just, he was constantly, yeah, okay. Cool, so all of these instrumental sounds are just a step towards being able to think about using the voice in arrangements differently. You don't just have to sing bum and do, you can make up your own syllables, you can create different kinds of, like, natural flanging effects, like a, Like, why just hold ooh? You can hold, you know, there's all sorts of stuff we can do that's really creative. Ooh, let me teach you one more instrument, and then we'll do some vocal percussion and, and focus on that. So, basses, what's a nice little note you could do? Can you go re, 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 tenors, re, 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 else? re, 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 just keep going. E Do it out of tune, that's actually more believable. So I find the acapella bagpipe freeing in that sense. But also, now that you know how to do it, please never ever do that again. It's our secret. We'll just keep it between ourselves.